Hey guys, what is going on? You rounder here, and this should be the last video. I've recorded like four videos today, so I guess I'll probably try to put them all out, but let me know. It's, I mean, you know, I know nobody that watches my channel has time to watch, you know, three or four hours of poker every day, especially not exclusively of me playing it. Um, so I, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, I don't want to put out more content than my viewers can possibly consume because I think that's kind of frustrating for, for you guys. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I'm playing much better when I record. And at the same time as that, I don't want to record for no purpose, right? Like, I don't want to just waste it or delete. I mean, I guess I could just talk through it all and then delete it. I guess I have it for my own use if I want it, if I don't want to upload it, or I could just do like a big long, you know, four hour recording, uh, like once a week and then put out the videos, you know, once a day. And then I can kind of focus on studying and whatnot the other days and not, uh, not worry about recording the other days that I play. Oh, I'll think about it. But it's uh, 1230 a.m. So I thought recording would be a good idea so I don't get tired, groggy, bored, anything like that. I mean, I, I slept in until I do this weird thing where I'll like wake up at like like eight, right? Like 730 or eight. And then I'll kind of like walk around the apartment, decide I don't really have much to do. And then uh, like lay back down and then wake up at like 10 and then like do a couple more things and then wake up at like noon. Um, so here we're just going to go ahead and go bet, bet, bet. And we were in a multi-way pot. So we size up our bet and just go for value. Uh, we might make a normal one third pot bet here to like bluff, but the nine's a pretty awful card. All things being equal. Um, it's not a nine of spades, which would be worse, I guess. But if our opponent calls here, like depending on how horrible the river is, maybe 13 was a little big, but that's okay. Oof, that's probably like top three or four bad rivers. Uh, yeah, we can raise with the open ended straight draw on the very dry board. We don't have position. If we had position, calling would be okay, but out of position, I think just raising and trying to push the get the folds is better. Not that we wouldn't have hit anyway. Uh, we get raised on the button, but we have queen six suited. So we'll peel, we'll peel the flop. Um, I don't know exactly how often we're supposed to be three betting. The flop like two, eight, six looks like a pretty nice three bet because his like polarized three bet range is going to have a lot of face cards in it. So we should be able to like pretty relentlessly three bet this so forget that we have a six i mean i just don't know if i'm comfortable or good enough to maneuver my way to the river and 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 like range the opponent who i've played one hand with well enough to not get myself into like really bad spots if that makes sense so to me, just taking what I think is probably a very profitable, making a very profitable flop raise against a most likely linear range that completely misses that flop seems easier with my very low equity hand. Like, you know, it's like not, not, not like my hand was that good. So hopefully that makes sense. I will be curious too to just go back and 
sort of look at and listen to some of the things I was saying and thinking in my older videos compared to the way I'm thinking about poker now. Um, I think it should be pretty, pretty interesting after a couple months of this training that I'm doing to see how different I sound. Um, sort of the same thing here, except for we have, I think, more reasons to call versus raise on the Jack-4-2. Um, also, if we get, we would expect this opponent to slow down pretty often with like Ace-King, which like we can actually get better hands to fold. Um Ace nine offsuit. Ah, shoot, that's a three bet. I need to pull that range up. Uh, that isn't supposed to be a three bet. So we've got this opponent who's called twice now on a turn that's probably overfolded. The reason I kept barreling is we still have equity. Uh, now that, that the river bricks off not in our favor, I don't think that we want to try to get him off of an ace. So I like that. I like that give up right there. I think that give up is saving us some money that we wouldn't have otherwise been saving. So I flatted here, so now I guess I, I check, right? I should have been three betting, um, just a small mistake, but I need to, those are, those are spots that I'm consistently missing, right? My three bet from the big blind and small blind, probably more so from the big blind, is, is really lower than it should be. So I need to be careful of that. What happened here? I raised and he called. I was in the small blind, so I three bet here. So eight ten queen is like pretty, pretty rough. We do have some equity though, so I'll go ahead and fire one. It's not like the prettiest spot, and getting raised here is no fun, but we can't fold yet. Um, it's a pretty big bet. Yeah, so I mean, he does have bluffs in his range. He's potting it though, which players typically like pot to protect. So this looks more like a queen nine suited type hand to me than a um than a like an ace jack or something. You know, like than a than a gut shot. And I mean, you raise the flop, which is pretty strong, and then continued betting full pot on the turn. Um, you just don't, that's not a bluff very often. And so then if it's value, we have to decide if we beat any of us value hands, which we don't. Fairly straightforward, I think. Uh, five ten suited. We can open. This is sort of annoying. <laughs> like, we're probably gonna have to like get some some high variance going here against this guy, but that's okay. Uh, it's just part of dealing with a short stack. Uh, um, yeah. Let's just try to get it in. Have him call with better, and then suck out on him. There we go. That's all we needed to do. It's easy. Okay, we probably could have called there, but that's okay. Um, easy game. Make sure we get that in there. Ah, he already left. It's annoying. Min raise under the gun. A call. Uh, this is an okay three bet. It's also fine to call. These guys are both short. 
We've got a pretty aggressive player here. So if we call and then this guy squeezes, then we can call, play heads up in position with a good hand. This works well. This is fine too. Um, tens. What is that really? Like that's what we want to... Let's pot that. Let's... What the heck happened pre-flop? We checked. Okay, so we must have been on the big blind again. Uh, I don't know. Let's just bet. And then I guess call. We're in position. Hit the flush. The king of diamonds would be nice here, but I guess that would make it hard for them to have anything they can call with. <laughs> so we'd have like all the flushes. Um, so we did get a call here. I guess we'll just barrel because he has 42% of hands, which is too many, and it's hard for him to have anything. <clears throat> and I guess we're done. Hopefully he has like a pair of fives. And let's go like, um, like $5. So I don't think we're good here. Again, I'm just going to kind of treat this like a three bet when I make these big. I think the ranges are like kind of similar, maybe a little bit different. I, I guess I would have to look at it on the like the player pool. But I feel like even if you look at the player pool of players who limp, right? Like even if you look at like, all right, these are the types of... God darn. All right, so let's not get frustrated. He called twice. This is a hot spot for folding. We just give up here. It sucks. We've got nine high, but it's um, it's just not a hot spot here for bluffing. And it's actually probably, if anything, a hot spot for getting called. Like this guy's probably gonna just ship or something, um, because he likely has a hand after calling twice. I'm sorry if I'm like talking kind of. It's it it is kind of late, so I feel like my voice is probably getting pretty uh, dry. But yeah, this is a spot where I would be super tempted to <laughs> look at this cute little two dollar bet. Um, player one, easy game. <laughs> Ace king had me. So this guy's, he didn't have quads, he showed ace king. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> uh, the late night player pool is quite a bit more active in chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm not considering folding. I, I was 
considered for just half a second raising, but it just doesn't doesn't make any sense. That's way too. I think that's merging my range uh, like way too much. And now I got a gut shot plus a pair, so I don't think I want to fold on the turn. I don't. I don't expect this guy to be like barreling light, but if he if he had a hand on the flop, the the turn shouldn't help too much. I blocked the jack for jack nine. Which is a hand he's betting. Um, I don't think folding the turn is very good. I also don't think that this is the type of the guy that's like barreling aggressively because he's playing 38 6. But I don't have. So, like, if he's value betting, no, I don't beat him. But I think that there's enough bluff still in just about any normal player's range here to call. I. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the queen connects too hard because of like queen jack and things like that. Um, and I'm out of position. Maybe this would just be a really good fold. He's betting for almost full pot, which is another kind of point in the direction of folding because we don't see players bluff uh, as often. And yeah, I, I'm just going to make a really tight fold, a very exploitable fold too. So I don't know if that jack matters or not. Maybe it just makes our life harder if we actually worry about that. So what happened here? I raised and I got flatted. So we'll check our range here. And I raised and got flatted. So we're checking range. And I called and then checked the flop. Three-handed, I think I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna call here, fold here. And he checked, so we'll go ahead and bet pretty much any two here. I expect this guy to have a king or a jack most of the time. Um. This might have been a good spot to bet and try to get him. Oh, guess not. I was going to say bet and get him off like a nine or a seven, which is a big part of his range when he checks back. But now uh, I think it's pretty easy fold. Limp and called a raise with ace king off. So he actually limp called with ace king. So that's, that's good to know. And then we should probably mention... Um, that two dollars on river into thirty with ace king on like queen queen nine nine or something x or something. So I think it was like queens and tens, right? Uh, queen 10, queen 10, queen 10, 7. Fold, queen 10, queen 10, 7. All right, need to focus up a little bit. Definitely going to be my last uh, my last video, my last session for the night. Unless I get on a regular sleep schedule where I'm staying up till, you know, 2 a.m. I don't want to push it to the point where I'm really losing mental focus here. Uh, I can't fold this, right? And I don't think it's a great spot for a check raise. Um, so I think it's just a check call. Right, that's probably the, the areas we should look first are uh, raising or folding and then look for the calling option when the, neither of those are good enough. So again, like here's the thing is this guy looks like he's never C-bet, but what he has done twice, which is pretty common like it's pretty much goes with the environmental trend is he has um bet when check two on the flop 
So let's see if it's here. Um, bet in position. Bet limp pot. Should be something. Flop folds. Flop calls. Flop bets. So he's bet 50%. Uh, it doesn't have. It has C bet in and out of position and call in and out of position. Um, I kind of just wanted to see like bet when check to, but I guess that's not in there. Bet first missed C bet would be would be the stat. On the flop, I'm surprised it's not here. Non three bets. Fold to raise, fold to donk, donk. Uh, it's annoying none of my bets are working again like sometimes it does that if I take like a break and I don't restart all the different software sometimes when I fire the tables back up they, they come back kind of half working and I would say table tamer works perfectly on all four tables about 10% of the time um, yep, we should isolate here with ace queen. We should, I guess, check our king, our 10 jack off. Uh, here, we're, this guy's potting it. We have a pair of eights. Not a great board either. I don't really have any stats on this guy. Um, now that they check through, we should bet like 100%, even into two players. We have some equity on this one, so I think it's an easy bet. Here, this guy shows that he potted a straight, so... He kind of donk potted it, right? Like, donk potted with straight on turn so that's a good note to have uh i guess we're on the button here hold there hold there pop this up and kind of just give a little um a kind of yellow like i feel like that's a yellow play you know it's kind of kind of nitty kind of transparent actually he looks like kind of a donk uh, obviously we're calling with ace queen pretty good flop it's only 14 hands so i don't know if this guy's fishy enough to size up our our c bet yet so let's just kind of keep it um exploitative for now yeah let's bet we'll just barrel here again we're, we're just kind of like talked about this in the last video we've talked about it on a few hands and i'm, I'm getting better at recognizing it but we've got a guy playing 40 percent of hands and like never folding and the board is like this you can just sort of barrel and it's just going to be correct usually because he just has too many hands pre-flop and he can't defend the rate. If he's starting with such a wide range of hands, he's never going to be able to meet the minimum defense frequency needed to like exploit any kind of aggressive strategy. I don't know what it would be or what it would look like, but I don't think he's going to do it. King, queen. Uh, we are getting three bet here by a guy that has never three bet us before. I guess we could fold, but we have position, so. Um, eh. I guess, I don't know, I'll just limp, I don't know. Um, we'll call, check. This guy checks to us. I mean, I would expect somebody to be betting like 100% here with most of his hands. So let's go for our sort of exploitative sizing again. Wow, easy game.
just kind of gave us the pot. Um, don't have very many hands here. Not really sure what this guy is doing. Call two bet with king two. Donks flop with top pair or better once. Well, that's about enough for me to be out of position with top pair weak kicker and this guy double barreling to think that it's time for me to go away. Since that was also, well, I guess he was in position. I guess that was a C bet, but I mean, this guy just doesn't bet that much. So I think he's probably just playing fit or fold. I wish my software was working better. I feel like it really gets me out of, out of my rhythm. Wait a minute. Oh wait, here it's here. I wonder if it like works worse when the screen recording software is going. I feel like screen recording software sometimes could theoretically mess with it a bit. I don't know. I feel like it always has like one, at least one table that's not really working. Um, Parish, which is this table, is our, our worst one, the one where we have queens. I can see that. There's some fishy. We'll see how this guy turns out. This guy is kind of fishy. This guy is not. This guy left. So we'll, we'll see what this looks like, but maybe we'll sit out on this one. Um, Queen 7 suited is like probably right on the edge. This guy's not stealing a ton. Let's go ahead and fold this one. I think queen seven suited is like really is literally like right on the edge of what we want to be. Um, three betting from the small blind. So I'll, I'll let him have one. This should be fairly overfolded, so we should get a honest response. Um, especially three-handed and we do have an open-ended straight and an overpair so it's not like we don't have a hand but this can get pretty ugly pretty fast we'll just size this up and bet Uh, not as worried about our unknown player here. Again, this is a pretty dry board. He has to defend a lot. So he probably has to defend a lot of like worse hands even on the turn. And I think by betting here, we make our river decision a lot easier. So let's bet like 550 on the turn. And... Uh, He can't really have too many draws that he wants to like go go nuts with. I was a little worried about value owning ourselves. <laughs> that was something that I thought about, but uh, I'm okay with it. I saw it, like you noticed I kind of sized down the bet on the turn. I didn't bet a full like three quarters like we normally would. I kind of sized it down to half pot. So I actually I think I saved some money there by taking the line I did with the bet sizes that I did. gonna try to get through another 30 minutes i'm gonna try to get another 30 minutes of play but i am feeling a little worn down mentally i also have contacts in which like makes my eyes feel a little bit dried out which makes me sort of feel more tired than i might be my energy drink is pretty much gone Um, I don't have any information on this guy, so I'm going to size it. I'm going to go 250 instead of like pumping it way up like I would if I knew it were a fish. This guy limp called. So he's got such a small stack that we can probably just go kind of small. I'm going to size it up a tiny bit. 
but not too much. Nine, ten, jack. Okay, we don't really have anything there. And let's see if we go five and five, that'll leave him 13 and it'll be 20. So like 550. And 14.75. Do we have the stone cold nuts? Nine, ten, ten. Yeah, I mean, how much have the nuts here? What the heck did he call down with? <laughs> Guess we can check. King seven. Ooh, nice river. Nice river for everyone. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you thought that I was doing that with Ace King, which I think I would have, in fairness. Then uh, it's probably okay. This guy min clicks it back. Um, I'm gonna keep betting here. Like he min clicked it back, but he could also have just like a lot of over cards and I don't wanna give him a free, I don't wanna give him free equity realization just cause he made a like little donk play on the flop. I mean, if he has five, six, he just got there now. Well, yeah, five, six got there. Um, both ways, but obviously we can check back now. Five, three, did that get there? No. Yeah, so kind of a strange little donkey, little click back. This was a three bet. That is a 100% absolutely bet, going to bet the turn. Um, now this guy is not like a huge fish with like a super wide range, but and he raised it like <sighs> I mean, he's raising kind of large he's almost raising a full 3x in a 3 bet pot and we're out of position and if we hit a king or a queen we could be dominated by ace king or ace queen if he doesn't 4 bet us um I just don't have enough information to, whoa, 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 rejoin hand. What the hell was that? I called. How do I call and then not? Yeah, I guess we can fold now. It, maybe it's a flop fold um, because he's got like sixes plus and, and we're just, I don't know. He's not gonna show. Yeah, I mean, he probably just has a like a medium to high pocket pair, like nines, eights, eights through jacks is probably the range of hands I would I would likely think he is on in that spot. Um, so let's review that and see if there's enough data to get us away from it on the flop, just based on the fact that the the population doesn't doesn't do that maybe enough. But in a you know. A solver would have a tough time just full. Like, I mean, I feel like we would have to peel a lot there to a raise. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe we're kind of throwing away some money. I know. I mean, maybe like you may think that call looks like really bad, but it's definitely close. It may be bad factoring in like population stuff, but it's definitely not something that you can just like auto fold like without thinking or else you're going to get run over by well maybe not maybe you won't even get run over if you just auto fold that but i don't know i have a lot of hands to review <laughs> if i actually go through all the hands like i feel like every third hand i click review on
Let's see any other 58 NL tables available. It looks like 100 no limit is actually popping off a little bit more this evening. Like, looks like there might be even more action at 100 no limit than at 50 no limit. So that's nice to look forward to. Uh, it's a pretty big ISO raise. Um, this guy's never three bet in 30 hands, so I don't think he's going to start. It's kind of, a, kind of a big call, but I'm hoping that the fish comes along, which she does. Uh, not the best. Two pair would have been better. Would have been nice to get the two pair here. Uh, let's go 150. And this guy has folded to a few three bets, so let's try that. And... guy's shown a propensity to bet too often we'll let him do that I'm not sure if he's betting I mean that's a lot of betting actually uh, he's betting pretty small here there's our two pair really want to see a showdown <laughs> I either want this guy to, I'd like this guy to call. I don't want to have to call. I don't know. I need to think. I need to think. Um, do we beat hands in his value range? He limp called. So he could be betting with like, he could have worse hands probably. He could probably be doing this with like six, seven. Is that, is that really, like, I mean, maybe seven, nine or eight, nine is like a way bigger part of his range. But I feel like a fishy guy like this could be one. It's possible that he's bluffing because he's shown weakness and this is a scary board. And two, it is there is some chance that he's doing this with six, seven, seven, eight, eight, ten, some other two pair. I, this is really close and might just be an auto fold because it is seven, nine. But. I don't think it's a I don't think it's that bad. I I just can't imagine that he's never value betting like a worse two pair. Maybe he value bets a worse two pair a little bit smaller. Um so maybe that's just a fold, but like I could also imagine somebody seeing that river seeing us both check fairly quickly well i guess he hadn't checked because he was in position so i guess just i checked so he had this guy to act behind still and he still made that bet but that guy checked the turn i was the better on the turn and then he saw me check so my range is fairly capped on the river and not all that well protected because I didn't choose to follow up with another bet on the river. I am okay with that call. I don't think it's great and maybe maybe a fold could be correct, but I don't think it's like a slam dunk fold. I think it's very close. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I mean, I, I've seen this guy play a few hands. Um, any swap C bet with over pair or less and no draw? Uh, over pair or less, that doesn't really. I mean, if it's less than an overpair, that's significant. If it's an overpair, that's not nearly as interesting. Uh, again, we've got the the donk kind of two to our left, which makes it a little bit harder to get to extract money. How bad was that hand? That was a pretty big hand. Yeah, that, that took a little chunk out of our... We were up to $70 already since midnight. Darn. That took a big chunk of our winnings. Yeah, we had a couple big big hands that we lost. 
That's okay. We're still in the green for the uh, the late night shift. All right, how are these tables? This table looks bad. But we have a really big fish right to our direct right, so we should stay. This guy's also really tight. We're going to open 100%. Uh, okay. <laughs> What's going on with this table? This table sucks. This guy only has $20. Let's just sit down next big blind on this one. Athens, which one's Athens? That's this one. Yeah, this one's pretty low. Make sure I'm playing aggressively on all these tables. I feel like sometimes when other hands on other tables come up, my my I just sort of turtle up on the other tables and start playing very very ABC and very minus red line. I guess is how I would like. Yeah, look, there's so many more 100 no limit tables going than 50 NL. That's really interesting. Um, here we got, let's get a seat behind the $80 stack. Oops, shoot, I see, like right there, I just made a mistake. I said I was going to, open 100% and then I just folded a hand. Um, this is a guy that has a very wide range. I don't think he has a lot of respect for us, but um, one thing I also need to be careful of is like I'll immediately adjust if somebody sees me bluff or if, or if something significant happens, I'll like 100% correct the other way and, you know, stop bluffing completely. Or if I see a guy show down a value hand, I'll assume he always has value and making sort of minor corrections for that sort of thing is, is okay. But just because a guy saw me bluff doesn't mean he can magically have a hand when he's like playing half the half of his opening hands, right? Like that's a thing that is that is important. Same thing here. Like just because this guy has seen me bluff, I mean, we kind of have a pretty good idea of identifying when he has a hand. Um, like he makes these like weird donkey nonsense bets when he doesn't have anything, and then he just makes a really large. Uh, you know, relative to the pot bet when he has a hand. So he, he's pretty transparent. I mean, we kind of got his number. It's amazing, right? Like this is a 50 NL table. A guy playing 49-19 who has never three bet in 40 hands is up at, you know, five buy-ins. It's, I guess that's why the games are good. No real point in betting. No. <sighs> Makes me jealous, like, right? It's kind of frustrating, though, that, that somebody that's playing pretty bad is, um, you know, up $200 on this table. No idea if he's playing other tables or not, or maybe he's down 200 on the other ones. But I just know that he's up 200. I'm not. And I think I'm a better player. So I should be up 200. I'm obviously saying that sarcastically, but the, the underlying idea there isn't completely 
sarcastic there is some part of me that's frustrated that somebody that's playing bad is doing well and i am you know not doing as well obviously that's not a completely false emotion um i'm not sure what to do with this ace three ace three offsuit i guess that's a call yeah i need to make sure i am playing aggressively enough this is an 18 9 so we're gonna open a little wider than we normally would from the cutoff <laughs> If I could, I would like tone down the bet size to like 125, but I don't feel like making that many adjustments. We just called here so we can check fold. Um, if he does check back, we'll bet pretty much any any turn. It's almost a sense of like when you see players playing this bad and with like such a big stack it's like oh my gosh you know like there's some sort of sense of urgency that like i need to get that money before somebody else does and that person never plays again <laughs> um that's not even completely exaggerated like that's not even necessarily wrong like there is some sense of urgency to get money from fish before other regulars get the money um and you know people who are going to lose money are eventually going to lose enough that they don't do it anymore uh, at least a, a you know some portion of them will <clears throat> See, now this guy's just folding to all my bets, but I mean, he's really not folding the flop all that often, which is just strange. Um, because of the nine and the jack and the two clubs, like I feel like there are a fair number of uh, bluffs our opponent can have. I don't think he's value betting worse, but I do think he can still have bluffs. I guess he could be value betting like jack eight or something, but that's a much smaller part of why i was calling i really think he has enough bluffs there and you know he's a, just the fact that he like had a fairly low open means he's probably somewhat regular ish uh let's see what he had oh that's not okay well take back everything i said that's not at all what i expected i don't know what he's doing I don't know. Do I double barrel it? Maybe I double barrel with sevens there on Jack nine. I, I don't know. Maybe I, I'd have to, have to actually put myself in the person's shoes. I guess if I'm playing 41, he doesn't know that I'm playing this wide. Um, we bet like hundred percent here. Yeah. He has no idea that I'm playing 41, 37. Not surprised that this guy raised. Um, actually, it's kind of a weird spot to raise. Um, I'm going to just barrel again. I think he could just be raising to like defend it. I, it this is a little bit no proof of this, but sometimes when relatively tight players are up against relatively like aggressive players, they'll like just try to fight back once in a while and uh that's kind of what that seems like is blind versus blind i can't have much this guy's just gonna fight back a little bit and um because i also had equity there it made it really easy to just continue pressuring him if i didn't have any equity i probably would not have done that um this guy's checked twice now so i'm gonna bet because a lot of hands can fall that make my three not as good. <sighs> I'm probably beat. The king's not a great card because it fits into some of what he might float with. 
problem is a lot of times I just check back and get beat by like a pair of sevens here, which is frustrating. But I think the king, if it was, I don't know, if it was like another deuce or something, I would feel better about betting. But I feel like there's enough kings in what he could be like calling the turn with that it's not a great. Uh... <laughs> he has exactly sevens. Uh, I've seen I've seen it before. <laughs> like uh, that's a really interesting spot. I think I th I mean it doesn't seem that interesting, but I actually think there's you know there's a reason I stopped and talked about it for a minute and didn't just hit the check button immediately. Like I do think that there is a lot of incentive to bluff on that river uh, after he calls the turn and checks i mean it really weights his hand towards a very capped but made hand uh and i think i i think i was acting a little too worried about the king thinking that a if i bet the king it makes it look a little more bluffy and two like some of his hands could have the king but really i mean i'm putting him on a pair of sevens not a pair of tens like i didn't think he was as good as tens in that spot although i suppose tens and sevens are pretty much the same there i don't know you don't know um <laughs> um what's going on in my head is i don't win very often with three high and this guy doesn't give me any credit so the combination of both those are are making me make a play that's probably outside of optimal um and i think i get looked up here with by like a six or a jack or a seven or okay five king obviously he's calling with but um Maybe I get him off of some of his jacks and whatnot on the river. Not anymore. Obviously, like, no more. Like, this guy gives me no credit now. So we'll make a note. I don't know if we'll get to use it, but I feel like some of that is my 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 brain getting a little worn out because I'm, I've been playing for four hours. And like when I'm talking about making a negative EBV play uh, while I'm still clicking the buttons to do that play, that's usually a good sign that it's time to take a break. But at the same time, it's probably not that bad. It's probably not actually as bad as I'm making it out to be. In all honesty, I mean, like the same things do apply. The guy is playing half of all hands. So like half of all hands, like, ha like yeah, obviously that's a defend. Um, but he is going to have other hands in his range that he called twice with that might be tougher to defend with. The real key here is I need to get a hand that... Um, you know when you're you know playing against a guy that is calling down light like this and doing weird stuff i mean it helps to get some hands and i haven't really gotten any hands against this guy against some of the other fish i managed to get some hands but this guy it's been tough actually this last session is i i had some really good winnings earlier in this last session but it has sort of um it's gotten kind of ugly This would be somewhere where I would raise 100%. This guy probably sees that it's a good opportunity to raise. Um, but he just flats. So he could be floating with tons of overcards. So we definitely have to barrel again. And I would expect a lot of folds on this turn.
Yeah, I'm like seeing a lot of small errors. Like I didn't size that bet up properly. Just little tiny things that do matter eventually. Um. Uh, yeah, once he calls the turn, the turn should be overfolded, right? So let's not go bananas. This guy's playing 13-13. The turn should be overfolded. So a big part of his range is like sixes, like pocket pairs, sixes plus. And then the jack falling, actually, if he is ever floating with something, like I don't think he folds his sixes when I barrel the third street. That could be wrong, but... Um, yeah, three, threes. Threes is in his range for sure. Again, he's probably noticing that I'm, I've been bluffing. He's probably not completely blind to it. So he's seeing me make some bluffs. Um, it's f annoying. I, I do think I should probably stop playing soon, but I also feel like I have a really good image for making some money at this table. So we'll see. I might... Uh, I might try to do a little more work before I go. Um, this guy's not folding a lot. I should have sized this up. Another small mental mistake. Um, not not that small a mistake though. Actually, like that's that's like a legitimate mistake. I should have sized that up. It's gonna make it a lot harder for me to get a significant amount of money in here when I hit a set. And when I hit a set against a fish, is a time that I need to be. He folded this time, but. You know, it would have been very, very hard to get a full buy-in into the middle there. Um, yeah, so remember I said I was going to raise like I was on the button here because this guy's so tight. Need to do that. All right, guys, we're coming up on 60 minutes. Uh, I didn't, I, like I said, I'm going to get a note so that I can give a good motivating quote at the end of every video. But um, for now, we're going to hold off until I get a, uh, a nice Evernote file with some good, some good motivating quotes to read you guys at the end of the videos. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I am going to try to um, keep plugging away for a little bit until table two breaks because I think that I've, I've, I've spent some money on this table, essentially building up an image that I, you know, would like to give myself an opportunity to capitalize on. And, um, yeah, yeah, I want to try to do that. So I'm going to try to go a little bit longer and, uh, yeah, I'll start uploading these. Um, should be Tuesday. Yeah. So hopefully these come out at least one or two of them. Maybe I'll try to do like two a day. Uh, they'll start coming out Tuesday. So hope you guys enjoy them. Leave any comments if you have suggestions, questions, whatnot. I'm usually pretty good at responding. And I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Till then, this is you, Rander. You guys keep on grinding.